Good. For those of you who don't know me, know me, my name is Barb Mort, and I'm the executive director of the Benzie Area Historical Society. And on behalf of the board and volunteers, uh, several of whom have joined us, welcome to the Benzoni Academy Lecture Series. Um, now, the Benzoni Academy was established in 1863 by our community founders, and its purpose was to afford all people, regardless of race or sex, the opportunity to receive a liberal education. So the Historical Society seeks to carry on that tradition by offering these free series of lectures on the second Thursday of each month. As many of you know, we've been offering our lectures only virtually since January, uh, but I'm excited to share that beginning next month, we'll return to our live lecture presentations. We will continue to offer lectures virtually for those of our friends who aren't able to join us in person. And you can also check out our website. We put past presentations on the website. So if you miss a presentation, you can come back later and view it. August 12th, we'll open up our live presentations and uh, Ann Arbor Car Ferry uh, fans will be excited to hear Andy Bolander's volume three of the Ann Arbor Car Ferry series. And that will be on the diesel era. And that will be presented for one time at the Frankfurt Methodist Church. And then in September, historian Jerry Hyman will, will be taking us to our usual home away from home and offering his presentation at the Mills Community House. And appropriately, he'll be talking about the, historia, the history of the Benzoni Academy. And as I said before, I encourage you to check out our Facebook page and website. We're um, continually adding programs and events. As I mentioned this, uh, that today we just added a community campfire sing-along and museum open house in August. And uh, there are uh, historical marker tours, a tour of the SS Milwaukee, and um, almost something for everybody. So check that out. The Benzie Area Historical Society is a 501c3 registered nonprofit. And we rely solely on donations from people like you to support our work and to maintain our historic museum home, the Drake School, and our school programming. So if you'd like to support the Historical Society, you can either go to our website and make a donation there, or you can feel free to contact me at any time. So a gentle reminder to keep your uh, microphone muted during the presentation, and a note that we are recording this so it can be shared with others later on. I'll be monitoring the chat, so post your questions there, and Glenn's presentation will be followed by a Q&A session. So if you put your questions in the chat, we'll, we'll get those questions to Glenn at the end of the presentation. So now it is my privilege and honor to present this evening's presenter, Glenn Chown, my former boss. He's the founding director of the Grand Traverse Regional Land Conservancy. And as I mentioned earlier, I had the privilege of working with Glenn and the staff there for eight years. And my summer often was often my summer office was often on a Benzie County trailer preserve, and it was really during that time that my love for Benzie County really deepened. And I'm glad to now call it home. And I purposely bought a house within three miles of I think three four preserves, so I'm in a great location. So those of you know who know Glenn can appreciate his storytelling skills. And some of his best stories that I can recall are from the Conservancy's early days here in Benzie County. As executive director, Glenn oversees the regional Conservancy's efforts to protect scenic, natural, and farmlands in Antrim, Benzie, Grand Traverse, Kalkaska, and Manistee counties. Since the Conservancy's founding back in 1991 by Rotary Charities, more than 44,000 acres and nearly 140 miles of shoreline along the region's scenic rivers, lakes, and streams have been forever protected. Glenn is a founding member of the Land Trust Alliance's Leadership Council, as well as a founding board member of the Michigan Hearts, Heart of the Lakes Center for Land Conservation Policy. He holds both master's and bachelor's degrees in natural resources from the University of Michigan, Glenn lives in a historic farmhouse on the old Mission Peninsula with his wife, Becky, and their sons, Martin, William, and Leonard, where he enjoys hobbies, including playing the piano. He's quite talented. Barn restoration, studying American history, and growing Riesling grapes. Welcome, Glenn. You've Thank got you, Barb. You've got the floor. You're very welcome. 
And thank you, Historical Society board members, for this uh, terrific invitation. Um, as Barb just mentioned, history is one of my passions as well. Uh, I love reading about the Civil War history. And of course, you all know the importance of a famous historian from Benzie County that wrote some of the definitive books uh, on the history of that war. And uh, I've also noticed over the years, um, something I'm passionate about is, it's hard to preserve cultural history without preserving the context. And that's in a place like Benzie County, that's the land in the water that has defined our settlement from, well, for thousands of years, if you go back into our Native American forefathers of this area. And um, so I'm really excited to talk about the history of, of some of our conservation work and what it, what it means to the past, but also what it means to the future. And uh, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary this summer of the Grand Traverse Regional Land Conservancy. And uh, we just completed a six year campaign for generations, uh, which was our biggest and boldest effort ever. Um, we, we completed that campaign a week ago yesterday. And uh, I'm pleased to report, that, in fact, you're the first group I've spoken to publicly since we closed out the campaign. So this is a special night. Uh, we exceeded all of our goals, uh, many by a wide margin. We completed over 86 projects, uh, raised over $90 million in a six year period. And 23 of the projects, land protection and access to nature projects, uh, we're in Benzie County in Northern Manistee County. And so we've been very busy in your home county. And I want to give an update on some of the really exciting projects that we've been completing through this campaign. But also for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Conservancy, kind of go back into the history that, that Barb referred to and talk about the leaders in Benzie County that have helped make the Grand Traverse Conservancy one of the top land trusts in the United States. So we, we have a proud history in Benzie County and I'm excited to uh, share a little background on that. So with, with that introduction, I wanna get started. And uh, let's see, we'll go right here. So our mission is, is focused. It's protecting natural scenic and farmlands and advancing stewardship now and for future generations. In addition to Benzie, we also, our service area includes Antrim, Grand Traverse, Kalkaska and Manistee counties. Like your historical society, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We are a charity and uh, in this 30 year period, we've grown from staff of one and I was the first person hired by Rotary Charities uh, in the summer of 1991. And we are now have uh, 28 full-time staff. So we've been busy. And uh, the reason we've been so successful is our supporters are passionate about preserving land and protecting the water resources of some of the most spectacular places in the United States. And right in the center of that is, of course, Benzie County. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some of those projects. What have we accomplished thanks to our generous supporters, our thousands of generous supporters? In fact, uh, we were just adding up the numbers on our campaign for generations. In a six year period, our organization received 26,602 individual donations 
toward this mission of protecting land and water. And it's an astonishing number of gifts. And it, it is a really, a truly a reflection of how passionate people are, how much love there is for this region, how much awareness there is that this region is changing, that there are immense development pressures and it's not as though our organization is anti-development. Our the, the mission, the philosophy that Rotary set forth was we need to balance development with preservation of the things that make our re region most unique, and that's our land and our water. And uh, the thought is we do not want to kill the goose that laid the golden egg. So we are focusing on protecting the best of the best the really special places that are important to our past, important to our present, and critically important to the future and our quality of life in the region. And that includes uh, 145 miles of shoreline that we've protected. Uh, some of our biggest projects right in Benzie County, you'll hear about. Uh, actually, this uh, statistic's inaccurate. Uh, we now have over 40 nature preserves because we've added three new ones, for example, in the Platte River watershed just in the last few months uh, that we're opening up. And uh, 28 natural areas, these are publicly owned properties that we assist with like Railroad Point. And here's an astonishing statistic, which um, we just added up the other day. Rotary Charities launched the Conservancy with a $100,000 grant in 91, over a three-year period. They weren't sure this, this thing was going to fly, so we asked for $300,000. They gave $100,000, spread it out over three years, and uh, they were going to see how, how this thing went. And uh, here we are 30 years later, that $100,000 startup grant has leveraged $270 million in private and public funding toward, toward our mission of protecting the land and water of this region. So that's an enormous uh, achievement that, uh, again, we're thankful for our supporters for making that possible. So how do we protect land for those who are not familiar with the Conservancy? We use a variety of tools. Um, we use conservation easements. That's where a, a private landowner, such as a farmer, for example, they want to continue to own their land, but they want to protect it from development for all time. They can actually extinguish their development rights, most or sometimes all, through a conservation easement. Uh, and they can be donated, they can be purchased, they can be bargain sailed, part donation, part purchase. It's a really great tool because uh, a lot of landowners, uh, they wanna pass on that land, but they wanna ensure that it's protected or maybe they wanna get some equity out of the land, the farmers, for example. And by selling development rights uh, and creating a conservation easement, that's a great tool for for protecting private land where it needs to be in private hands and not open to the public. We also do the traditional land acquisition and I'll, I'll share some examples of that. Our, our biggest land acquisition project ever, the coastal campaign was in Benzie County and straddling, of course, Manistee County. We'll talk about, about that. Municipal assist, that's when we help local government acquire parkland. Uh, the very first uh, Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant to a local unit of government was Railroad Point, and it was the Benzie County uh, partnering with the Grand Traverse Conservancy that secured that grant. We're going to talk about the Railroad Point area. And then technical assistance, we help Municipalities secure grants, uh, do management plans. We, uh, our volunteers support uh, 
projects in the county that like Railroad Point, Alberta Dune South, and uh, helping uh, municipalities like the village of Alberta uh, acquire grants to improve their park, their shoreline parks. And we'll, we'll share a little bit of information on that. So a variety of tools uh, that we use to get the job done. And we're nimble and we're focused. And um, we, we believe in uh, that it's important to, to act quickly at times, and that's the advantage of a private organization. Sometimes government, oftentimes government moves very slowly, so they turn to the conservancy uh, for assistance. So where did it all start in Benzie County? Well, it actually started, honestly, at Chimney Corners. Um, literally, I think the second week when I started my job in the summer of 1991, I got a call from a, a board member, a founding board member, a guy named Ted Curran from a summer resident of Crystal Downs. And he said, Glenn, you need to meet Molly Rogers. And I said, well, who's Molly Rogers? And she, he said, she is the grand dam of Crystal Lake. She, uh, she's the best cook in Benzie County. She runs Chimney Corners and she's passionate about preserving Benzie County, both the cultural history and the land and water. And, um, and she knows everybody. And uh, I think she could be very helpful to the Conservancy. So I said, well, what, what, what do we need to do? I said, well, let's call her up and see if she'll host a gathering of some of the movers and shakers that are, that are passionate about protecting the, the resources of Benzie County. And uh, sure enough, she hosted a high tea in July. In fact, we're in the 30th anniversary, July of 1991 in the historic building, uh, the original chimney corners where they're, before they put the restaurant on the, on the lake there and uh, invited, as she said, some very important ladies, uh, people like Naomi Borwell, uh, Betty Mitchell of the Seabury Foundation, Family Foundation from Chicago, uh, Nancy Brickman of Crystal Downs, uh, Julie Granger, uh, et cetera. And um, anyways, uh, uh, Molly introduced me to this group, gave a short presentation about what the Conservancy was all about. At that time, we were still a gleam, a glimmer in Rotary's eyes. And the, the great news is that uh, everybody signed up th that afternoon. And we, four of those women uh, instructed their family foundations to make three year startup grants uh, to match Rotary. And um, they've gone, they went on to literally donate hundreds of thousands of dollars towards key projects like Railroad Point, Coastal Campaign. And maybe most importantly, they started talking to their friends and their networks and they lifted the conservancy on their shoulders, metaphorically speaking. And uh, honestly, Benzie County's support for the conservancy uh, allowed us to grow very rapidly. And it's something you should be very proud of. Uh, it really helped the Conservancy flourish at a critical time and provide an underpinning of support that we'll be forever grateful for. And that allowed us to think big, dream big, as uh, Walt Disney likes to say, used to say, dream big and do big. And so we, with that kind of support, 
the ambassadors like uh, uh, Molly Rogers and uh, early board members like Nancy Brickman and and uh, Wally Edwards, who was our uh, our first vice chair of our board. In fact, we've had three board chairs from Benzie County: uh, Wally Edwards, Virginia Sorensen, and and uh, very own John Collins from Platte Lake is our current board chair. So a long history of board leadership from Benzie County. Arcadia Dunes came knocking at our door uh, around uh, two, the year 2000. Uh, we protected the Watervale Inn property, 7,000 feet of shoreline on Lake Michigan. And you can see the peninsula between uh, Lower Herring Lake and Lake Michigan, that is Watervale. And of course, that was led by the Kraft family and uh, Dory Turner, who provided immense leadership uh, in that effort. And then uh, what came knocking on our door, but the fact that uh, consumers power, consumers energy, CMS, uh, was selling 6,000 acres including the famous uh, Baldy Dune area in the center of this photo, two miles of shoreline, and uh, probably one of the largest and most significant properties anywhere on the Lake Michigan Basin. Long story short, we had to move fast. Uh, Mott Foundation from Flint put up a lead grant of 7.75 million if we raised $5 million locally in 90 days from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And uh, it was the people of the Arcadia and Herring Lake and the Crystal Lake area, really throughout Benzie County, who heroically uh, put their money where their hearts are. Um, and we were, we were able to pull off what was considered at the time kind of the impossible dream. We not only raised the fi over $5 million in 90 days, but um, we went on to raise over 35 million in the course of a couple of years and protected not only the Arcadia Dunes property, which is our largest preserve. And I think it's the largest privately owned preserve on the anywhere in the Lake Michigan Basin. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nationally significant conservation story. In fact, when you are, uh, we have an astronaut, Jerry Lineger, who now lives in Leelanau County. And when he used to orbit the earth, he's, he's spent more time in, outer space than any other human being. He's, in fact, a major science project. They're studying the impact of the, all that time spent orbiting the Earth. He used to look down at the great geological features of the planet Earth. You know, the Himalayas, uh, the Amazon basin, the Great Barrier Reef. And what, what, was, what was his favorite thing to look at? It was the dunes of Lake Michigan. And he's a bit of a poet. He described it as a pearl within a pearl, a, a geological resource uh, that's of planetary significance. And here we have that on the coast of Benzie County. And we have a place that's preserved forever called Arcadia Dunes. Thanks to people who really stepped up when the challenge was put in front of them. So it's really up, it's all of you, people that supported this effort. And we also protected Greenpoint Dunes. It's the Southern or the Northern bookend to Arcadia Dunes. So this is looking South towards Arcadia Dunes across the Herring Lake Basin from Greenpoint Dunes, which has, you know, I've traveled to Hawaii. I've traveled to North Africa. 
uh, Spain. I've traveled widely, and, I, and I'm a person that pays attention to coastlines because I'm a Great Lakes kind of guy, and that's that's in my blood. And uh, I've looked at coast all over, and there is no more beautiful coastline than this sec this slice of Benzie County. And isn't it great that nearly four miles of this five mile stretch of coastline is forever preserved thanks to the to the work of the conservancy and our supporters in railroad point um back going back into our history this was in the around 1996 uh, rusty lewis a long time uh, crystal lake resident on the west end gave me a call one day and said glenn railroad points for sale and i said what do you mean railroad points for sale she said um i just got wind that there's a development proposal to put in i think it was 46 homes right on railroad point on the shoreline and on the bluff on a property uh, that was uh, owned by uh, ingrid divine and bettina applehoff and she said glenn you know what to do, just call her up. I've already called him, called him up and said, you're gonna, I, I've told him you're gonna be calling him. I said, oh, <laughs> thanks Rusty. So called him up, long story short, they were willing to sell this property at 75% of its value, a little over $2 million, at 2000 feet of frontage on the lake and, uh, it became the first ever natural resource trust fund project with a local government, uh, Benzie County. Jim McGinnis introduced me to the chair of the Benzie County Board of Commissioners and the rest is history. We purchased that property in 1997 and we've been adding to it ever since. And it's a magnificent spot on the south side of Crystal Lake and uh, if you ever, Get a chance to go out to the trail system there, the Walt John, Walt, the Mary Johnson trails system, Mary Margaret Johnson. Um, it's a fantastic view of a 9,600 acre basin, which is Crystal Lake. Arguably, and I can say this because this is a Benzie County audience, Argue, arguably one of the most beautiful lake inland lakes in the world and it's named crystal lake for a reason and when you're up top on that point looking out over that basin it's a it's a slice of heaven that's magnificent upper herring lake uh here's a great project that predated the conservancy when we were in startup mode leelanau conservancy worked with Rotary and worked with people like Charlotte Putney uh, and others that uh, had cottages on Upper Herring Lake uh, to acquire a couple hundred acres to protect the west side of Upper Herring Lake. So it was an important early project to get the conservancy underway. Fruit Haven, I, no I noticed Lon McKinley was on the line. Hello, Lon. Um, Fruit Haven was a, it was a farm owned by the McKinley family when they migrated from Old Mission Peninsula. I love this story. Over to Benzie County. At the time, land was uh, less expensive, and there was probably other motivational factors for the McKinleys to move from Old Mission. Uh, to Benzie County, and uh, uh, this became our first ever farmland pre preservation project in Benzie County, over 500 acres. And we work with Lon and his family, I think it was in 1999. It was a very interesting transaction, uh, which is too complex to get into right now, but Suffice to say, if the McKinley family didn't care so much about the history, I mean, this farm was where the Alberta peach was first developed. 
And think of how famous that is. And it was one of the most productive fruit farms anywhere and stewarded for generations by the McKinley family. And uh, farmers understand the importance of stewarding the land. And we're just so happy they called the Conservancy and we were able to work together to preserve that. And it's a part of the property now is a nature preserve close to 200 acres with some great hiking trails. So check it out sometime, particularly on a fall day, it's gorgeous. Lower Woodcock Lake, this, uh, we're moving over to the Platte River watershed. This is a campaign for generations project. Uh, it's an entire inland lake as you can see, and uh, absolutely magnificent near the upper reaches of the Platte River watershed. In fact, uh, this property has over 2,000 feet of frontage on both sides of the Platte River, in addition to an entire inland lake that is just magnificent. And uh, how important it is to preserve properties like this uh, to maintain the water quality of not just the Platte River, but all the Platte Lakes and ultimately Lake Michigan and Platte Bay and the Sleeping Bear Dunes. So all of these properties are interconnected from a habitat and a watershed protection standpoint. And uh, we had to raise over, I think it was over one and a $1.4 million, but received some tremendous gifts from lead donors uh, with ties to Benzie County. In M Mount Mini, um, I'm gonna just let you look at this photo. Uh, this is an aerial photo of Mount Mini. Uh, this is looking, I believe this is, yeah, this is looking south. Uh, the property is uh, on Deadstream Road. Uh, in, in, it's in the isthmus between Big Platte Lake and Little Platte Lake. It's about 66 acres, um, about a third of a mile or more of shoreline on Little Platte Lake. And uh, actually, very interesting history here. I first uh, experienced Mount Mini when my 23 year old son was in kindergarten. So that must have been about 18 years ago. My son, William, who went to school at Old Mission Elementary. And guess who his kindergarten teacher was? A woman named Sally Casey, whose family has summered on Platte Lake for, for generations. She's been there all her life. And um, so Sally, for the last day of school, took the entire kindergarten class from Old Mission all the way over to her place on Platte Lake and made them hike to the top of Mount Minnie. And uh, so I, I was one of the chaperones and we got to the top and she looked at me and she said, you you run the Land Conservancy, don't you, Glenn? And I said, well, yeah, that, that would be me. And she said, don't you think this property should be preserved? And I said, I think it, yes, I, it should be preserved. Well, that was 18 years ago. Uh, and sometimes these projects take that long. And, and about a year and a half ago, we started talking to the owners. Uh, there was concerns about logging and developing the property. In a long story short, uh, the property hit the market about a year ago and we literally moved in less than 24 hours to secure a purchase agreement. And uh, I'm pleased to report thanks to heroic gifts, particularly from people around the Platte Lake Basin. Uh, we have now, uh, I think we've raised 100% of the funds needed to preserve this property. Trails are being built every week by volunteers and our staff, work, work crews going on. And uh, 
We've already installed a parking lot. There should be a full trail system by sometime next year. But uh, you can, you know, get out and enjoy this property. It's on the uh, north side of Deadstream Road, and you can look, go to our website to find a map on how to get there, but it's a fab fabulous place. So Mount Mini. And this kind of shows the extent of current projects in the Platte River. Um, if you can see my cursor, that's the location of Mount Mini there. And I'm going to just share a little bit about Embayment Lakes, which is between Long Lake and Rush Lake and Crystal Lake and Platte Lake. And, uh, and, and also the, uh, the Platte River Park in the Village of Honor. So Platte River Park, uh, this is a great story. This is the story of the little engine that could. And of course, Honor went through some tough times when their elementary school closed and, and some real visionary residents of that community came together and said, how do we restore the vitality? And how do we do some placemaking to make honor the village more vibrant. And uh, they approached the conservancy and said, you know what? We're the host of the National Coho Festival and we don't have any access to the river in our little town. And I said, boy, that's ironic. That doesn't make sense. And they said, you know what? There's a property that we think we could purchase, but..." we don't know where to begin you know what do you guys what does the conservancy do how, how can you help us so we went and appraised the property we uh, talked to the landowner they liked the idea of helping improve that community giving people access to the river we put it under option and then we helped uh, the harp the honor area, honor area restoration project leaders uh, assist Homestead Township with applying for a Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant. And we also helped them to, to some extent do some of the local fundraising, but they really, they did the local match fundraising themselves for, for the most part. Long story short, over $300,000 of public and private money were raised. They've purchased the park. They've gone back for a second grant to improve the park. And it is magnificent what it's doing for that community. And uh, so we, as an organization, I like to, I like to quote, paraphrase Abe Lincoln. And we are of the community, for the community, by the community. And this is a great example of community conservation at its best. And I'm, I'm so proud of the people of honor in that village and what they've accomplished working with the Conservancy. And then there's Embayment Lakes. Um, I love this photo. You're looking, uh, of course, you're looking north uh, to Sleeping Bear Dunes across the Platte Bay Basin. And uh, you can see the Manitou's way off in the distance. And you can see uh, Rush and Long Lake. But uh, this property came up for sale about two, three years ago. And um, it's about 100, and I think it's about 166 acres. Uh, so you can see it's got a lot of frontage on the two lakes, a lot of frontage on a connector stream and smack dab in the middle of Platte and Crystal Lake. And um, long story short, we were able to close that deal uh, about six months ago, and we are installing trails and we will be opening this property to the public and then in the fall. So another place to go hiking and exploring in Benzie County. And look at how close it's located to Sleeping Bear Dunes. Uh, very strategic location uh, from a habitat preservation standpoint, from a watershed protection standpoint. And uh, it's, again, local people 
putting their money where their hearts are that have allowed us to pursue this acquisition and successfully close it as part of our campaign for generations. And uh, the access for it nature uh, aspect of our campaign is something I'm most proud of. Uh, the our first ever universal universally accessible trail was the Overlook Trail at Arcadia Dunes, uh, opened about three years ago. And uh, it's about a little less than a half mile from the Baldy parking lot. And when you get to the end where you see that beautiful platform, uh, you are overlooking the Chippewa Basin of Lake Michigan, which is the deepest area in the entire lake over 900 feet. And it is a magnificent view. And now, thanks to this project, people of all abilities can have lifelong access to a breathtaking experience out in nature and really enjoy that place. This, and this trail system has won awards from the Builders Exchange Council for, its, for the design, the engineering, and being able to do it in a very sensitive way uh, that preserves the natural features and provides better access for all. Speaking of access, the Charlie Care Memorial Trail Connector, uh, which connects the Betsy Valley Trail on Crystal Lake to the Mary Margaret Johnson Trail up top where you get that fabulous view of Crystal Lake. So if you haven't checked this out, uh, I would urge you to take a check out these stairs and what we've done is enhance two great trail systems by connecting them. And of course, Charlie Kerr was a prominent board member of the Conservancy, a leader on the Benzie County Parks and Rec Commission, a uh, local dentist, and uh, he was an incredible ambassador for our work. In fact, he recruited John Collins to our board. Uh, so how significant was that? And here's the addition to Railroad Point, the, the coal property, a uh, couple hundred feet plus. Uh, it was the reason the Betsy County or the Betsy Valley Trail had to be rerouted because uh, of a lawsuit that went on for years. And they could, they could have built a couple of homes here, which would have really disrupted the trail in the, in the whole Railroad Point area. And uh, again, we got a call a couple of years ago from the attorney of the estate of the Cole family and basically said, if you want this property, you got to move fast. And uh, we were able to secure a million dollar grant uh, from a member of the, Gran uh, the Granger, from the Granger Family Descendants Fund to, to secure this on a temporary basis. And then we worked with Benzie County to uh, secure a trust fund grant. You can see how strategic this is through in this map here. Uh, and what this does is provide um, from the outlet to the east end of the road commission property, there is now over 4,000 feet of publicly owned shoreline forever protected. Over 10 different projects since 1996. And it's just a tremendous uh, conservation effort that is going to pay dividends for generations to come. Alberta Beach, here's a little plan that we're uh, working with uh, the village on, helping them improve the beach so that also there's less erosion and abuse of the beach from off-road vehicles, but also improving access. So this is a great project that will get underway this fall. And then uh, I'm going to close with uh, this is not in Benzie County, but I think Arcadia is kind of adopted by Benzie County. It's right on the boundary. And uh, uh, it, following the Arcadia Dunes Overlook Trail, we received so much positive support and feedback for, from that project. Uh, people said, well, what's next? And we, uh, we decided to construct a three-quarter mile boardwalk 
from M22, the parking lot off M22, all the way to the St. Pierre Road parking lot on the other end of the marsh. And uh, if you've never been to this boardwalk, put it on your list because it is absolutely magnificent. The Payne family um, um, made a $600,000 gift from three generations of family members uh, lead gift to, to construct this boardwalk. And what, what, um, what Marty Payne said to me is, I want to create something where people feel transformed when they go through that marsh, where they can learn about the Great Lakes marshes, the fisheries, the birds. This is a top 10 birding destination in the entire state of Michigan. It's really one of the ecotourism hotspots for the whole state. And uh, it is magnificent. And thankfully, we, we constructed it in a way that the boardwalk could be raised. So when we had record make Lake, Lake Michigan water levels, we were able to raise a section of the boardwalk that was nearly underwater. So uh, it's a fabulous place. And as you can see, people of all abilities, young and old, uh, are able to get out and enjoy this, learn about the Great Lakes, and learn about the unique natural features of this region that really define us. And uh, proud project. And we've, in this campaign for generation, we these two projects really led the way, but we've now completed uh, eight projects that provide universal access from Charlevoix County to Benzie and in, in, uh, in Manistee County and places in between. But it all started at Arcadia Dunes. And uh, so again, you folks should be very proud you've led the way, you've been in the vanguard. And I just wanna thank everybody for the support they've provided to the Conservancy over the years. And I think that'd be a good point, Barb, to open it up for questions. Well, we're glad to um, take any questions that folks have. I think one of the most important things the Conservancy does too, because not all of our um, most dedicated and passionate Benzi, um, Benziites or Benzonians um, pride themselves on, it's not just people who live here year round, it's people who visit here, you know, who have a cottage to come back to. And one of the important things the Conservancy does is help landowners maintain property and keep it within their families quite often. Watervale is a really good example of a piece of property. And I know the Robinson property is another one that was a private easement where someone wanted to make sure that this was going to be able to be carried on in generations with their family. And then also being sure you know, that there wasn't going to be a subdivision developed there one day. Um, so that uh, we do have a congratulations from Stacy Daniels. He's a um, historical society board member. And he says, congrats Glenn on 30 years of achievement. He still remember, he remembers the humble beginnings of the Trap Farm, Arcadia Dunes and Railroad Point. And uh, Charlie Carey brought up his name and the Trap Farm, I believe he was the first land steward we had at the Conservancy. Uh, and he led- Number one. Uh, yep. So he was important uh, through the Trap Farm all the way through, including Railroad Point. And um, it was just great to hear you talk about so many of the individuals who made a difference, who took the time to pick up the phone and invite a neighbor to join them in a project. And I think the power of the Historical Society's story and the Conservancy story is the power of the individual to make a really big difference. And the other thing that I come away from is a, a great amount of pride now being a Benzie County resident. And at the Historical Society, I've been so, um, you know, immersed in our history and learning about how many firsts we have and how many unique ways we've contributed to history. And um, at the state level, when we're considered for grant funds, I've heard it said, oh, for such a small rural community, they sure are able to accomplish a lot. 
And that has been true from the, you know, our county beginnings, what, 151 years ago now, 152 years ago to today, it's the power of the individual. And um, we might be small and we might be rural and we might have our challenges, but we're pretty mighty here in Benzie County. And that's uh, why one of the reasons I really wanted Glenn to come and share the stories of all the individuals who, you know, um, Larry White is on the phone and you know his mom, Ace, who was on the board of the Conservancy. A lot of people will know, will know of Ace and, um, you know- A founding he, board member and um, recruited by Wally Edwards. And um, Ace uh, secured the Conservancy's first ever planned gift and it was from Betty Mitchell. Oh, wow. Because uh, Ace was one of the first female certified uh, financial uh, advisors and was a real leader in that whole field nationally. And she donated her time to help the Conservancy think about being sustainable in our very first year to get a planned gift uh, from, from Betty. Uh, who loves, who so loved Crystal Lake, like Ace, uh, in our very first year of operation. But it's the kind of talent that people with deep history and connections to this county. It, it, you're right. It's 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 also the summer families. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about Watervale. Not only did they protect the entire property in that whole peninsula, both on Herring Lake and Lake Michigan, over 7,000 feet of frontage. But they put a historic preservation easement on the historic buildings, the Victorian area cottages. Uh, and it's like going back in time. It is. And they've been preserving that those buildings since 1917, the same family. And uh, so we have all these treasures and there is a very close relationship between the cultural history yeah. and in the water. And so I, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to, to kind of bring that all together with this type of program tonight. Well, thank you, Glenn. It was wonderful to see you again. I miss hearing your voice in the next office. And uh, a lot of what I learned about managing a nonprofit came from my days at the Conservancy. And uh, so thank you everyone for joining us. I encourage you to check out their website and check out the trails here in Benzie County. Um, they are just terrific. And when you're driving down the road, many of the view sheds that we have, even if you don't go out in the trails, the view sheds that we have are thanks to the Conservancy. and. Um, you know, many historic sites are being protected um, by the Conservancy too with through their work and making sure that development happens where it should and not where it shouldn't happen. But thank you, Glenn, and thank you everyone for joining us. For your friends who would like to check out this lecture, in about a week we'll, we'll have it posted on our website and you can view it then. So thanks very much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Take thank care, you. everybody. Thank you. Remember to check out BenzieMuseum.org. Thanks. Bye-bye.